an entitled mom tries to get me banned from a gym. This was a couple of years ago. I was 15 years old and lived about two blocks away from the community gym and would go there often. My routine was weightlifting and then cycling, just because I liked those two. Because I always went around the same time, I got to know and like some of the regulars. Here's how Jimmy, which isn't his real name, and his mother, Karen, came into the story. Jimmy has special needs. He's a really good kid. He likes to use the cycle machines while his mom uses the treadmill on the other side of the room. He absolutely loves anything trains and transportation and likes dumb puns as much as I do. So we became good friends. I learned a lot about the Hungarian subway system and everything is easy breezy beautiful. One day, Jimmy and I are sitting on bicycles next to each other, as usual, and he starts to come on to me. I sort of just go along with it because he's been doing it for a while and I didn't really think much of it. I had a boyfriend at the time who Jimmy was well acquainted with at the time as well. When I was first starting to become friends with Jimmy, his mom pulled me aside and told me that he was sensitive to being touched, especially suddenly, which I was cool with and respected. The interaction continues. I was intensely into my workout at that point and not really talking, so when Jimmy reached out and touched my inner thigh, I was completely in shock. Out of reflex, I slapped his hand away. Jimmy broke down. I don't want to go into much detail about it because it's personal to him, but let's just say it caused a scene. This is when his Karen mother went absolutely crazy. I went up to her in almost tears and I said, I am so, so sorry. It was reflex. I didn't mean to. She goes, what did you do to my son? I look at her and say, what do you mean? I didn't try to hurt him. I'm sorry. Is he okay? She gets even more upset at this point and says, no, what did you do to my son? At this point, I was fully in tears and gym management had come out to try and assess the situation and a lot of people were staring. I just said, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. From there on, it was more of the same. Eventually, the manager stepped in and Karen claimed that I had hit Jimmy unprompted and that I had acted really gross around him and eventually tried to claim I was a predator. I was 15 and fully crying. She demanded that I get banned from the gym, threatening physical violence. The manager, who knew me quite well, was very suspicious of this. She had me go to the back room and tell her my side of the story. She sided with me, thankfully. Jimmy's mother was given a six-month suspension from the gym, but I never saw her there again. Apparently, this wasn't the first time that this Karen had this kind of outburst. Jimmy went to live with his father a few cities away. I'm not exactly sure why, but I think his Karen mother's anger issues might have been part of it. And overall, I haven't heard from either of them since. A friend who knows his dad told me that Jimmy's taking community college classes now and is doing quite well. This is a terrible situation to be in because nobody wants to be touched unnecessarily and without consent. And if I was the girl in this situation, I absolutely would have reacted in the same way and smacked the person's hand away. I mean, that is very jarring and very triggering and very, very upsetting. It's a shame that the Karen mother had decided to act the way that they did. And it's ridiculous that they tried to make these weird claims against them based on something that their son did. Overall, it's just kind of a super sketchy situation. And it's one of those situations that you hope you never get put in because it's just scary all around. So I don't think the girl's in the wrong for doing this. Karen never came back to that gym. Am I the jerk for stealing $200 worth of lottery tickets at work? I would like to preface this by saying that I have a gambling problem. I'm trying to get better, but it is not easy and I relapse frequently. And right now I'm just trying to stay on track. It's especially hard because I work at a gas station and I get to stand next to scratch offs all day. A day ago, I had no money because I lost it to gambling. So I came up with a brilliant idea in my diseased mind. I said, let's just take a $25 scratch off, ring it into the register, pretend to put money in and bam, once I win, I'll just put the money back in the register and keep the rest, right? Wrong and very stupid. As the night continues on, the slope gets slippery, and before I know it, my drawer is short $200. This is bad. I texted my manager when I was clocking out, lying that my drawer came up short when I was counting it, and I was freaking out and didn't know what to do. She said it's okay. She said to just leave it be and it will turn up in the morning, but I knew it wouldn't turn up and that I would have to ask them to just take it out of my next check. I thought maybe this would solve my problems, but no, I was wrong. The next morning, I wake up and I text my manager asking if the money should showed up. She said that it hasn't, but she was watching some footage from the camera and she had a good idea of what happened. Well, here it comes. A paralyzing panic shoots through my body. As five minutes later, my manager texts me and asks to see me. I went ahead and drove up to the store, knowing that I had been caught and was prepared to face some petty larceny charges. I get there and there's no cops, which is a good sign. I go in and my manager shows me some footage, basically showing that I'm caught. I explain to her my master plan and my current addiction. She cuts me a deal. No cops, no telling of the high 
higher ups. Just bring back $200 and it can all be forgiven. So I proceed to do whatever it takes to try and get that money to her, ending up having to sell some of my belongings just to make sure I don't see any jail time. Overall, a lesson learned. Gambling is bad. Don't be me. I feel like a massive idiot and I really hate myself right now. To answer the question, yeah, I think you're a jerk, but I think you learned a valuable lesson. I think you also might want to look at getting a different job because standing next to the thing that you're addicted to is probably not healthy. Maybe you can work past it and find some kind of resolution, but based on your previous history of using up $200 worth of scratch-offs, I don't see that as a healthy place to be working at, all things considered. But congratulations on not going to jail, and hopefully next time you won't make a mistake like that again. My girlfriend doesn't include me on big life decisions. I found out recently my girlfriend is applying to jobs to the other side of the country. She's doing that because she isn't happy with the wages that she earns where we are currently living. I have a small business and work full-time 9 to 5 in a tech company. My job is not remote due to me having to deal with hardware. The problem is that I'm sure she won't last. We've been together for almost three years and she never held a job more than four months. She always finds something wrong and then leaves the job. Due to her job hopping so often, she doesn't see the problem of me just quitting and finding a new job there. Money is a problem in our relationship because I'm the one covering when she isn't working. Especially now, I do not have enough money to move to a new place and cancel the current lease on our home. Her idea would be to just take the debt and do it. What hurts the most is that she keeps saying that if she gets this, she will go because she knows what's best for her. I feel like she is only thinking about herself. Also, the job she is turning down due to the wages are all between $75,000 and $80,000 a year. I feel like these wages are good for where we live, especially that she is making a lot less due to not constantly working. What do I do? According to the original poster, it looks like the girlfriend says that she will be going if she gets this new job, and it also sounds like she's implying that she'd be happy to try a long-distance relationship with her boyfriend, but even he is basically saying that he's not sure how well that's going to work out. It's really a shame because from the looks of it, it really does seem from the outside looking in, obviously not knowing all of the details of what's going on, that the girlfriend is only thinking of herself in this situation. She's completely ignoring her boyfriend and everything that they've done together, and I just don't think that's fair. It sounds like they live together and they have a lot of commitments together with finances and other things, so I just don't think it's fair to just get up and leave just like that just because you're not happy with your job. And by the way, earning $75,000 to $80,000 a year doing something is a really good wage. Like, you can live off of that and be very comfortable. So I'm really surprised that she's turning down jobs of that nature. I hate to say it, but it sounds like this relationship is probably going to fall apart because if she's making big decisions without even including or considering her boyfriend and what he needs to do, then I'm fearful that this might continue if they end up like getting married or something. Overall, this is really messy and hopefully there's some kind of workaround where they can find some kind of middle ground and make this work. Otherwise, they'll both be doomed to a long distance relationship and who knows if that could work out. My mom gave me up for $2,500. So some backstory. My mom and dad split up when I was roughly 9 or 10 years old due to my mother cheating on my father when he was out of the country. My father's a pilot so he leaves quite a bit. At the time, it was me and my two older sisters, one of which was already an adult. So my other sister and I were left under my mother's custody due to my father always flying and not wanting us to go through moving all the time. As far as the details go, my dad not only paid my mom child support, but also paid off the house. Despite having little money to take care of himself, he paid my mom more than what he actually owed. Yet my sister and I never saw that money. After the divorce, my mom turned to many things. Sleeping around, gambling, drinking, and eventually some more illegal activities. My sister practically became my mother since ours decided to step down from the plate and I was too young to take care of myself. When my sister left for college, all the emotional abuse she took ended up falling on me, which sent me into a loop. Due to my sister taking all the damage, I typically saw my mother as, well, my mother. My young brain didn't notice how often she didn't come home at night or the lack of food in the house or the constant weeks I'd wear one outfit since I didn't have other clothes that fit. I didn't notice how not normal this is. Heading into high school, it became more and more obvious that this wasn't right at all. Yet I still loved my mother. We bantered and ate fast food together and she was proud of my accomplishments. But she did have her moments. Sometimes dropping hints that I'm too boyish like my dad. Refusing to let me cut my hair. Pressuring me into wearing makeup, heels, dresses. Convincing me I don't need therapy as my therapist at the time made me uncomfortable. And so on and so on. Meanwhile, my dad met a woman and they fell in love. When she became pregnant with his kids, he moved to America after my little sister was born and started a new family. I love my stepmom. She's literally the sweetest woman I know and I adore my baby sister. Over time, after spending 
spending many nights in their home, I came to realize how much happier I was in their home over my mother's. One day, I told my dad I want to officially live with him. When I told my mother this, she was deeply upset and cried, but she understood, or so I thought. That's when everything went downhill. The text messages started. She started to guilt trip me, saying things like, maybe it was your dad that convinced you to move out, and that your dad is convincing you that I'm the bad guy. The more these texts happened, the less I wanted to talk to her. It got to the point where I would cry after every conversation because I was so confused and lost. One day, she practically trapped me in her car in my best friend's driveway to tell me how my reasons for leaving her were absolutely ridiculous and that I clearly don't remember what it was like in that house. This explains some of my personal memory issues too. Fast forward to the good part, the custody case. Due to me being the last child between my mother and my father, my dad no longer had to pay child support. Obviously, they go to court about this. Except my mom didn't show up for many, many hearings. When she did, she had this ridiculous story about how my dad owed her a bunch of money because he never paid the full child support, also saying how she felt pressured to believe him and trust him when he said he knew how much he owed her, despite the fact that he actually, in reality, paid more than he needed to. So if you're catching on, this fight was more about money than the kids. Here's a fun little thing. My mom texted me maybe a month before this case, starting about how she desperately wants me to come home, how she will do anything to get her baby back. Well, that aged quickly, didn't it? Because one day, my mom stated that if my dad pays her $2,500, she will give up full custody of me. My dad agreed to it and it was over. She gave up custody rights for $2,500. It still stings. I'm still bitter and angry to this day about it. And this case happened years ago. I don't think my mom is aware I know the details on this case. As she reaches out to me as if we still have a relationship to tell me how much she loves and misses me. The thing is, I learned that my mom actually despised me after the divorce because I reminded her of my dad. My mom just loves being the victim and even tried to convince my sister that she doesn't remember doing all the stuff she did to us. She even blamed my dad for cheating on him and said it to my face. I haven't had a real conversation with her since Christmas, over the phone of course, and haven't seen her in person since maybe before the pandemic. She texted me recently all excited about a gift she got my sister's unborn baby and it sent a whole new wave of resentment towards her. I stopped trying long ago to have a relationship with her as she doesn't try in return and will continue to do so until she admits her wrongs, apologizes, and actually tries to be a mother for once in her life. Until then, my only mother is my lovely stepmom. This person had to deal with a terrible mom growing up. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. They basically gave their daughter away for $2,500 and they never cared about them at all. It was all just a money battle and that is so sad. At least she is out of that household and she never has to deal with that ever again. I can't imagine growing up in an environment like that where your parent is actively trying to ruin you and trying to work against you to prevent you from having any kind of relationship with your father. What a disgusting person. I'm glad things worked out for the most part and they were able to find some semblance of peace in their life, especially since getting away from their terrible mother. My parents don't work and it stresses me out. I'm a 20-year-old female who lives with my parents and my two brothers. My brothers are 14 and 16. My mom used to work at a decent pay at a retail job. She was our main provider for a while, but ended up quitting after 12 years of doing the same job so that she could become a stay-at-home mom for a year or two while my dad provided for the house. In the end, my mom wanted to work again, but she can either only find retail jobs, which she does not want to do again, or other low-paying jobs. So currently, she quit her three-month job and is now staying at home. My dad is no better. He always quits his jobs. Every month, he quits. Then for one to four weeks, he does not work, then works again, then quits. It's been a cycle for years. Right now, my dad quit, and with my mom not working, it stresses me out how we're going to survive. I mean, we live decently, but I do not like the carefree mindset and that they can just chip off their savings until they feel like working again. I work so I can provide for myself if need be, but I don't know about my brothers. Plus, my brothers work, and I don't like how my dad has this mindset where they work so they can provide for themselves. Recently, my 16-year-old brother might get better pay, and my dad exclaims how the family will have more money. I didn't like that statement because it's my brother's money, not the family's money. It's almost like he wants his kids to provide for the house instead of him or my mom. I don't know what to do. I tried to hint at them getting a job, but nothing is getting through. That is a very dangerous thing to do to decide to want to quit over and over and over again. I can understand if you're job hopping to try and find a good place for you, but the job hop just because you don't want to work because you want to quit and lay around is super unhealthy. Think about what kind of example you're leaving for your kids. You're basically telling them that you can just leave your job whenever you want and that longevity doesn't matter. Unfortunately, in some situations, longevity absolutely matters. And if anything, this might be 
a sight into what the future holds for this person as well as their brother. She is probably going to be seen as some kind of money bank that her parents can then draw from when they retire. And at this point, how on earth are they ever going to retire? Not having a job and not working or making some kind of income is going to make retirement impossible. And in my opinion, she can expect that they'll be probably knocking at her door one day asking if they can live with her because they have no other options. So at the end of the day, she needs to look out for herself and work for a better future for her. Today, I messed up by going on vacation with my sister and catching a stomach virus from one of her kids. So this happened probably about six to eight months ago. I went on vacation with my mother, my sister, my brother-in-law, and their two young children. We were going to a local zoo-like attraction, rented a cabin on the beach, and had planned to stay for a few days. On day one, we hung out at the beach and had a great time. Day two rolls around and we got to go see the zoo-like place and also had a great time. We saw all kinds of amazing creatures. It was a top-notch vacation so far. Then, the revenge of Montezuma hits the toddler and it quickly spreads. I woke up at 5 in the morning on the third day of vacation because my mother had caught whatever stomach virus the kid had and quite literally went to the bathroom in the bed if you catch my drift. At this point, I think to myself, well, she's my mom. I'm obligated to help the lady clean up and then get out of there and go home as fast as I can. About 30 minutes into my drive back, I feel the first warning sign. My stomach feels odd and I can hear that tiny voice from my gut that's saying, oh, we're about to have a bad time. So I pull up to a McDonald's with the intent to try and use their bathroom to get out what I could before we hit serious time. And to be fair, what came out of me? Well, it was foul. It was like a sulfurous volcano and a swamp got into a car accident. Approximately 10 minutes into creating a fair imitation of what the pits of hell must smell like, I heard the bathroom door open and then I hear a rich southern baritone call out, that's ridiculous, and the door promptly shut. I'll never see this man again. I'll never have the faintest clue of what he looks like. But the sound of him judging me at one of the lowest points of my life, wrecked with my stomach cramps and incubating a biohazard. That, friends, will live on with me as long as I have the cognitive capacity to function. I completed the drive, having a pause every 30 or so minutes to pull over and throw up. When I finally made it home, I went to continue vomiting in the bathroom. Not a huge bathroom. There's barely enough room between the commode and the bathtub to sit and vomit. And in my weakened state, I managed to get stuck there. I threw up so hard, I went to the bathroom all over the place at the same time, if you catch my drift. I don't have afterlife stories like people that passed away for a few minutes, but I do now have the experience of what the actual act of passing away feels like. I'm sure it feels like this. Too weak to move, throwing up so badly that you poop yourself. Thank God my girlfriend loved me enough to help me roll into the bathtub, wash myself, inject Pepto-Bismol directly into me, and then roll me onto the bed to finish passing away. I may have survived, but part of me didn't that day, including whatever shred of dignity I had left. I'm not gonna lie, that's the funniest thing I've read in a very long time. My man just wanted to go on a simple vacation and have a good time, but instead he had one of the worst experiences of his life. I have been there, you have been there, I think all of us have been there at some point in our life, and that is not a fun time. Thankfully, he was able to take care of this while he was at home, even if he had to make a pit stop at a McDonald's bathroom. But if it's any consolation, at least he and probably everybody else that went on vacation probably had to deal with the exact same stomach bug. So at least in that regard, he's not alone, which I don't know if that's something you can look forward to. Today, I messed up by letting a homeless man sleep in my spare room without asking my wife. So I was driving home from a gig tonight around 11 o'clock p.m. and I saw what I thought was a dead body on the side of the road. I pulled over and walked about 500 yards back to the road in the dark to discover a homeless man lying on the shoulder. He was okay. He was just sore with a bad knee. He was cold and wet. I offered to give him a lift and he accepted. We chatted for about 40 miles back to my hometown and I learned that he had prostate cancer. He informed me that his older brother had recently lost a battle with the same disease and that his wife had recently passed away due to COVID. He was hitching to town another two hours away to see his estranged 17 year old son. We discussed his homeless life and tattoo career as well as hearing how other people had helped him out with a bed or a train ticket. When we arrived in the small town I live in, we drove around for a while trying to find a shelter where he could sleep. As the reality set in, I knew there was nowhere I could take him. It's cold, wet, and he doesn't own a sleeping bag. Finally, I just say, all right, whatever. You can stay at my house tonight. The only thing is, I didn't ask my wife first. She got up when she heard me talking in the basement, our spare room being down there, and I explained the story and she was not happy. I know in my heart I'm doing a good thing, but I also know it's incredibly reckless, and I'm really worried my wife won't forgive me for this. So now I'm sitting upstairs trying to stay awake all night so the homeless guy in my basin doesn't sneak upstairs and steal stuff or even worse. That, my friend, is a very risky move. I'm all about trying to help out the homeless and anybody in need, 
but man, you've got to be careful. Who knows what that person's intentions could have been? Like for me personally, I'm all about being charitable and helping people in need, but when helping people in need could potentially put a loved one in danger, that's when you might want to double check that what you're doing is actually for the best. I can understand why the wife would be upset. I personally would not want a strange man in the house, especially if I didn't know them, especially if they're coming off the street. Like there's a lot of bad things that you're opening yourself up to, but it sounds like they sussed him out after a 40 mile drive back to where they were going. So I guess it worked out in the end, but next time you've got to be careful because the last thing you want is things getting stolen or even worse to happen. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright free music to use for your next stream.